Hi everyone, continuing on with our series of videos talking about different lighting techniques in Blender, in this video I'm going to show you how to paint with light. That might be a bit of a weird way to put it, you might think, well how do you paint with light in Blender? But what I mean is using texture maps and emissive materials to create lighting around an object. Now of course this will only work in cycles, and I've talked about this feature of cycles like so many times in other videos, but in this video I'm going to show you how you can get lighting for your scene without using any actual light objects whatsoever. So just to jump in, I've got a plane here and a sphere, this is very dark, and one area light just to show you where the sphere is against the background. Now I can imagine that this sphere is like a more complex object, perhaps I'm doing a product visualization or some cool piece of artwork, but I don't want to use an HDRI because maybe I'm trying to keep the file size down or something like that. Well, what I want to do is I want to paint light onto this plane and then have that project onto the sphere. So to do this, first of all, we're going to make a new material for the sphere. And then in the material nodes, I'm going to create an image texture node because this will contain all the texture data for our emissive pixels. So I'm going to drag that down here. Now planes, like I said in the last tutorial, already have UV data assigned to them because they're a primitive. So we don't have to worry about UV mapping this, but if you're using a custom object, then you would have to do that. In the image editor down here, I'm going to press new and I'm going to type in something like light plane. I'm going to keep it on 1024 by 1024 pixels because we don't need too much detail for this. But then under the color, I'm going to click on this and make sure the alpha value is all the way down because I want to have a transparent image. And then I'll press OK. So that gives us our base texture. So I'm going to put this texture into our image texture node here, so light plane. And then I'm going to do two things. I'm going to plug the color into the emission value of the principal BSDF shader and the alpha value into the alpha. So now we have our image texture, we have our plane and we can get ready to paint on it. So obviously the way we do this is by going into the texture paint mode. So there's a couple of things to keep in mind. I'm in the cycles viewport at the moment and when you paint on objects it doesn't always update. You might need to go back into the solid view and then back into rendered. Second thing to keep in mind is that when we're actually painting onto objects like this plane, there are different modes for the painting. In the top here you can see that there's a drop down where we've got all these different blending modes. And the one that you'll use by default when painting is the mix. So if I click on mix and then click to drag on this plane, you will see that all of these pixels are starting to appear. Just so you know, I'm using the material preview mode for this instead of the full cycles rendered view. This is basically like using Eevee with some pre-made settings. Using this is handy because when you're painting, it will update in real time. Unlike cycles where you can see that if I try and paint over on the right here, nothing's happening, but we can see that it's changing in the image. So if you've made a mistake and you do want to get rid of some pixels, holding control and clicking does not really work because we're just adding black to everything. So the thing that you do want to do is go back up to that drop down and then choose erase alpha. And then if we paint with this, it's going to basically cut off everything that we've made. So I'm just going to give us a nice little blob. Maybe I'll separate this into some different shapes like that. Then we'll go back into object mode. And if I go into cycles, you can already kind of see that it's partly being reflected off of this sphere, but our emission strength is really low. So let's turn this up, put it up to something like 50. And now you can see properly that this light is being reflected off of the sphere. And I'm going to get rid of that area light. So we're just using this. So you have complete control over the strength and the color because not only can we paint color on manually so if i go up to the color here and then choose blue got to make sure it's on the mix mode so if i add some blue there and then come back you can see that there's actually some blue light being mixed in with the red so i add a bit more for some creative color variety and then back into cycles and you can see we've got this nice kind of multicolored blurred light going on so say you had a cool looking object maybe you've got like a sci-fi face going on that's foreshadowing for our next demonstration and you knew that you wanted to have some kind of like diffused studio lighting coming off of the object but you couldn't find an hdri that gave you the appropriate pattern then what you can do is just paint your own pattern and then use it as a plane but you'll notice that yes of course this plane is being represented in cycles and it's very ugly we don't really want to see this so is there a way we can hide it yes of course there is. So if you go to the object properties tab down here, and if you go down to visibility, then under ray visibility, you see the camera tick box, untick it, and then the plane will disappear. So if I turn off my overlays, we just have the sphere and our custom lighting acting on it. And then of course, we can duplicate this and move it around. So if we wanted some more of that lighting pattern going around, we can do that. So now we have this simple sphere with quite complex lighting going on, and we don't have any lights or any HDRIs whatsoever. We've painted the light onto planes, and now we're using that as an object in the scene. So something to keep in mind, if you don't save this image, then when you reload Blender, you will lose it. But if you try to close Blender early, it will prompt you to save it anyway. But one thing you can do is if you click on image, you can press pack, and then that will contain the image inside of the blend file for you. But it's always good practice whenever you make some changes when painting to go back to image and then press save. All right, so here I have my skull, which was originally used for the bi-gen cover artwork. 
I have a very, very basic, but not super interesting light setup using two area lights here. It's not great. I don't really like it. And I've intentionally restricted it this way so we can get some more creative lighting by using the method I just showed you. So from an artistic perspective, I might look at these eye sockets here and think, okay, I want some almost medical-like strobe lighting being kind of diffused off of this. So we're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to make a plane. The normal direction of the plane is important as well because you can only paint on one side of the surface. By default, this is the upwards facing direction. So if you just keep that in mind, you can rotate that and face it towards the object. So I'm going to scale that up a bit. Remember, this will be hidden in the render afterwards. Then again, I'll make a new material. Maybe I'll call it Studio Light. In the nodes, image texture, make a new image texture called Studio Light. 1024, 1024, turn the alpha down and plug that in. Connect the emission and the alpha and we're ready to go. So I'm just going to paint white, it's on mix mode, and I'm just going to give us four circles again, but you can get creative and do like whatever pattern you want. So one, two, three, four. So I'll go back into object mode and let's render this quickly. I want to turn the emission up, so something like uh, 20. Yeah, let's go all the way up, why don't we? 50. So what's going to happen is we can start to see it reflecting off the eye socket here. So I can move it kind of up, and we can see how that's moving across the surface. So we can play around with position. I'm going to move it further this way, maybe scale it down a bit. I'm going to put the emission up to 200, so we're getting some stronger lighting going on. And then because we have node control here, we can also do the recoloring inside of these nodes. So if I make a mix RGB node, I'm going to set that mode to color and maybe make it red turn the factor up. So now we have this kind of red ominous lighting going on across this eye socket. Now because it is a strong source of lighting, it's not only going to reflect off of that, it's also going to project the lighting onto other areas of the object. But like I said, we can duplicate this and move it around again. So if I wanted to get a similar effect going on the other eye, I can just move that into a position where I think it's appropriate. And then of course we can disable the camera rays so it's now invisible in the render. Now he looks a bit derpy, but basically you can just see how you can get creative control over lighting with just these simple plane objects. So maybe if I thought those dots were too boring, then I could go back into the texture paint mode, then add like a cross or something, go back into the rendered view, and then we would see that cross represented there. So that's a pretty interesting pattern going on. And that's of course something that would be quite difficult to do with regular HDRIs to get the position right, or even with normal lighting like spotlights or point lights, it'd be very difficult to get very definitive patterns like that on a reflective surface. All right, so moving on to our last and probably the weirdest demonstration. I have a character model here, which you can't see yet because he's kind of invisible, but I UV mapped him and then I painted emissive material all around his body. So I'm going to show you this as we turn the emission strength up so you can start to see this character appearing. Now this character is inside of a 3D scene. It's only made up of cubes. But the point here is we're going to try and light this using no lights whatsoever, just the materials. So as I turn the emission strength up for this character's kind of body details, we can see that some of the cubes are starting to appear. Okay, that's fine, but uh, you know, there's quite a lot of detail on this. It's a bit hard to make out. And we can see that light bleeding onto other parts of the character. So to complement this, we'd want some rim lighting or stuff going around. So I've got a plain object at the back behind him. It's invisible, of course. But if I take a look in the uh, solid view and then go over to the texture paint mode, you can see that I've already painted these blotches around the character. So if we go back into the rendered view and turn the emission values for this up, you can see that we're starting to get a rim around the character and some extra light on the cubes. So let me keep turning that up. And it's becoming more and more apparent. So this is useful for if you wanted to describe exactly where light was reflecting around the curvature of an object. So for example, you can see that the light's kind of going around the rim of the entire object here, which you may or may not want. But say I come back into the texture paint mode and I remove all of this with the erase alpha mode and then go back into the rendered view, you can see that we don't have that rim anymore. And if I wanted to bring it back, I would start painting and go, okay, well, I want it kind of around the arm there. And then I want it coming over the top of the head. And then again, we go back into the render view and there we go, we've got the rim going around. So if you set this up properly, you can kind of exquisitely control where you want rim to be around objects with creative use of these invisible kind of painted plane light sources. It's a bit of a weird technique because obviously people are used to using the area lights, spotlights, point lights, sun lamps, and the HDRIs and stuff like that. But this is just useful for if you wanted to get some extra creative control. And it would probably be really useful in combination with the other light types as well. But like I showed you with the skull demo, the benefit of using this over light nodes or HDRIs is that you can get some very definite control over the look and the pattern of how things are reflected off of object surfaces. So I just think it's a pretty cool thing to keep in mind. There are alternatives as well. For example, you could make a grease pen 
pencil stroke in 3D space, then convert that into like a curve, thicken that out and then give that an emissive material and then hide that object from the camera. So doing that, you could literally kind of paint light curves in 3D space. So if you think that's an interesting technique, maybe give it a try and feel free to show me any of your results. This might conclude our series of strange lighting tutorials. We did the light nodes video, which was very interesting. A lot of people seem to not actually know that you could control lights with nodes, but you can, you can get some really cool effects going, especially animated lighting effects like the water cool sticks and the wormhole effect. Then in the create a beautiful screen effect in Blender video, I showed you how you can project video content across multiple objects at once. And that can of course be its own light source for other objects in the scene. And now in this video, I've showed you how to paint lighting in 3D space. So before we go, I just wanna come away with another piece of artwork again, like I did at the end of the last video. So I've gone back to my Biogen cover art skull. I'm gonna make the painted light we've given it blue instead, because of course everything has to be blue for me. I think that's quite interesting. Although maybe I'll take one of these planes and put it down a bit more as well, just so we get a bit of kind of under blue lighting going on. Maybe that one's a bit too strong, but I actually quite like this. There's something a bit ravey about it. So I think that's going to be quite a cool effect. So if you found this video interesting, feel free to subscribe, check out my other videos, maybe sign up to the Patreon to get your name at the end of videos. Feel free to join our Discord server where you can share your work, take part in art challenges and get sneak previews of upcoming projects. You can also check out my products on Gumroad and Blender Market, but I think this plug is getting a bit long now. So just have a lovely day, have fun with the technique and I will see you next time.